Good morning. So I decided to vlog today. This is my usual morning setup here. I've got this whole mess. I'm just kind of planning my day out. I am <laughs> recovering from a bout of nausea. My doctor told me to take medication on an empty stomach and I should have known better because I know I can't do that, but they were like, the antibiotics should be okay. Take it before you have breakfast. It's gonna be more effective, bad idea. So I was like out for 45 minutes just trying to <laughs> not feel sick. So I'm feeling a little bit better now and I'm gonna get on with my day. Okay, so I'm gonna fill out my food diary with you. It's the A6 Hobonichi with the Dormon cover. And I, this is how I usually fill it out. I've got my friction pens. This morning my blood sugar was 129. A little bit on the higher side, but still okay. My doctor says I can be about 130 and below because if it gets too low, I can dip in the middle of the night and that's not what we want. So I was 129 this morning. Breakfast, to counter the nausea, I already had an organic applesauce to try to hopefully make the nausea go away faster. These are great. I love these from Costco. I keep these on hand. My daughter really likes them, but these are great because I always know it's going to be 12 grams of carbs. So I actually keep these um, next to my bed in my nightstand for when I suddenly scan my numbers right before bed and I notice that it's a little too low. It could still be in a normal range, but if it's at like 80 to 90, that still is a little too low and I could possibly go too low in the middle of the night. So I will have one of these right before bed and that'll usually keep my blood sugars pretty pretty good and it's no sugar added gluten-free these are great I highly recommend these if you are looking for an easy snack because I always know it's gonna be 12 grams so I already had an applesauce 12 grams carbs I'm about to have one angelic toast which is 12 grams with avocado so I'm gonna have an avocado toast topped with some cherry tomatoes, which I'm not going to count. So any of the veggies, I don't have to. And Earth Balance, which is like vegan butter. So I can have that. I'm not going to count that as well. But when I mean Angelic Toast, I mean this brand right here. It's by Angelic Bakery. It's local to me, but they sell it at Costco. It's a sprouted whole grain, seven grain bread, and it's always 12 grams per slice, and my blood sugar seems to really like it, which is great. I'm not a low carb person. I mean, I have to be, but I, I like my carbs. I'm a diabetic who likes my carbs. I can't cut it out completely. And um, so when I want bread in the morning, if I want a light breakfast, I can have my bread and still feel like you know I'm not missing anything so that's what the label looks like highly recommended it's uh I've had this I've I've been having this for like you know a year or so now and it my blood sugars really like it so I can have um even two slices for 24 grams and still be okay like if I want a sandwich or something so I'm about to have all of that I'm just going to keep breakfast light because I just had my weird bout of nausea. Um, and then I will probably fill that out. Um, well, I will fill it out after my two-hour reading right here, and I will mark that in red. And then after breakfast, I will take my medication. This has been one of the best decisions ever, is this entire pill box from Amazon, because I had such a hard time trying to keep up with it, because I just had them all in like a, just like a one, like a week thing. And this way I can separate my vitamins by morning, noon, and night. And I feel like it's a little less um, on my body, especially because I can't take vitamins or anything on an empty stomach. So even taking them all at once kind of gets a little bit. This looks like it's intense, but it's really not. 
uh, my medication's really at the top and then everything else is just vitamins. I just make sure to take vitamins all the time. And then the hair and nail gummies have really saved my nails because my nails were chipping really badly. But uh, I will link this down below because man, ever since I've started using this, I've been so consistent with taking everything, even my medication too. Sometimes I would just forget, especially for on the go. Whereas if I'm on the go, I just grab the day's uh, vitamins with me, pop it into my purse, and I'm good to go. This is great. I love it. And I always film on Sundays, so that's why Sunday is empty. I do my morning planning, so that's why I have my weeks mega out. I have my scribble journal, so if I need to make any notes for the day, or if I just have thoughts or dreams that I want to quickly write down. This is my new planner case. I love this thing. It is, I don't know who it's by, but I'll link it down below. I got it on Amazon. It's pretty cheap, it was like $6. And the only thing is, is I kind of wish it has a couple more loops so I can, you know, cause I have, you know, my pens that I use, but all of them are my colors that I use with my favorite color, mild liner. And then this top opens up as well. And it's got this like strap on the side. It's really nice. It's really lightweight and handy. I'm just kind of pop it anywhere. But it's got the two slot pockets here. So I've got some post-its. I pulled out most of my post-its and sticky notes so I can just use them up because I've just held on to them for too long. I've got more sticky notes back here. I've got the new ones that I bought in my favorite color. I'm really noticing that my favorite color is turning up in stationery, which has been really fun. Hand lotion, correction tape, and then my expensive and unnecessary Midori list stamp. It's nice, I like it, but it's just so overpriced. I wouldn't recommend it. And then my washi dot stickers. I love these. I bought them in all different colors. I use a dot system for tracking things on my in my planner. So the red is all for my health things, and then purple is for like personal, like reading and uh, like when I finish a book or something. And then I have my to-do list. Um, so it's quite short. Last week was really busy because we were hosting friends, and uh, that that required a lot of like making sure I just had the house clean and all of that because they were staying overnight. This is a really fun thing. I got this at the Elkhorn Flea Market. It's a metal clipboard. From the 50s and it's got the felt bottom it's got the calendar from 1951 to 1955 the first date of the month and what day it falls on during the week all the way to December it's from the Bowman products company and this is really cool because it is a perpetual calendar that I can adjust for each month got it for five dollars at the flea market so I love that and I love the 50s the 50s are my one of my favorite eras one of the many and I use that to keep my daily to-do list on there and <laughs> my daughter loves to go check the mailbox so we make up little things of mail for her so she has something to get in the mail because she doesn't get mail um, and sometimes we'll give her junk mail so she feels like she's getting something too, but that's what that's from. And I recently started Jane Austen's England, Daily Life in the Georgian and Regency Periods. So I really am excited to dig in. I just started, I'm only a few pages in, but the only thing is, is I noticed in the maps, this is map showing the main places in Hampshire where Jane Austen lived. And I understand that this is more of like the Hampshire area, but there's Chawton. And I think Chawton is right here. And Bath is only in like right here. She spent five years in Bath, but I don't understand why it's not here. I mean, would it be up here outside the border? It just feels like if you're going to label all the places that Jane Austen lived for the majority of her life, I feel like Bath should be listed. But Bath is nowhere on here. Am I going crazy? Do you see it? I don't know. She 
she was there for five years, so I just think it's just kind of strange. I don't know the geography of England, I don't live there, but I'm just kind of basing this off of my own Austin knowledge. So you tell me, I don't know. I just found that really strange. I, that was like the first thing I fixated on. I was like, am I going crazy? And I hadn't even started reading the book. So, so far it's, um, I, I've just dived in. So it's chock full of information. I've heard good reviews about it. It's a really thick book. So I've finished all the library books that are on my uh, Jane Austen July reading list. So those can be ready to go. I'm thinking I might just renew them just to save them for a like TBR recap, but I'm glad I got the library books done. But I'm going to go have my coffee and my breakfast and I'll check in with you later. Hey Buster, good morning. He's in a smaller penned up area because we had friends over. So we had to move his area, but he's usually got a bigger area for him to play around and and run around. Mm. He's getting old, he's a senior bunny. So he doesn't have a tendency to want that much space. He, he actually likes to just have his little cardboard box cubby and we leave his main pen area open so he can run in and out of that but Buster Bunny. yes Buster Bunny so um. he's such a home bunny so he doesn't like to explore we open up the pen sometimes for him to run around and he doesn't really have an interest so I think in his younger Buster years he really Buster liked being Buster able to Buster run around and, and oh. jump but nowadays he, he just likes to chill Okay, we just got back from the library and I thought I would show you our little book haul. We go almost every week, almost. We like to rotate through what we borrow so that way she doesn't get tired of it and then we can you know, try out new things. I've been trying to incorporate more of my family's culture into her reading. So we have the Animals of Chinese New Year and it's got pictures of babies which she's really fascinated with right now. So I thought that would be a great one. She's really into the little house books. And these are great. They're the My First Little House books, which are the summarized version of the original books. So it's not nearly as long and they've got you know, larger pictures. So it's really great for toddlers. And we've got Dance at Grandpa's, The Deer in the Wood, Going to Town, Winter Days in the Big Woods, sugar snow. We have a couple that we own and I thought it would be great if we could find some more to add to it because she loves being read these every night which makes me very happy because I love the Little House series. And what I like to do is uh, because I'm currently I've just got too many books to read that I like to just sometimes go through their actual shelves that you can buy the books. People can donate them which is great. They've opened that up again. So I might actually open up or donate some of mine to, um, you know, to that uh, cause. And then, you know, you can support the library. And I found a couple of kids' books. This is Mother Goose, and it's illustrated by Tasha Tudor. I saw Tasha Tudor's name, so I pulled it out, and I thought this was such a great find. So I'm really excited to just go through this one myself and read it. I love, I'm fascinated by Tasha Tudor's life, so I thought this was such a great one for 25 cents. And all the proceeds go to the library. And then I found this one to add to our little house collection. This is County Fair. So now we've got three of those books. And the great thing is, is like if I buy them, I don't have to worry about, you know, having to return them within a time frame. Uh, the hardcovers were, I think, $2 each. Not bad at all compared to, you know, what you would normally pay. And this is like, you know, $30 for the hardcover, so not bad at all. This is The Uncrowned King, the story of William Randolph Hearst, who started the newspaper. 
The King and the Crown, History of Royal Weddings from 1066 to 2011. The Writer's Guide to Everyday Life in Renaissance England. This is going to be a really fun one. And it's kind of broken down into more like a dictionary form. So government, domestic, you know, food and all of that. So I feel like this is such a great one that I can kind of just read in sections and not have to go all at the same time. And I love old movies. This one is about Cary Grant, The Lonely Heart. I've already read a biography about him and one about his... Um, his wife uh, that she wrote. It was like a an autobiography of her life with Cary Grant. And I thought this one was interesting because this one draws on interviews with coworkers and friends. So it's really just kind of getting a different sense of who he was as a coworker, as a friend, as a person. And I'm really excited to go through this one. And it's got some really great kind of unseen photos from from his life. I love biographies about actors from the Golden Age. I love reading these. So this is my little book haul. I'm having some yogurt right now because my blood sugar is still a little bit high from lunchtime. And I'm telling you, I, I think I've mentioned these on my Instagram a few times, but I am so happy that I've discovered the two good yogurts. They only have two grams of sugar. This is the vanilla, which I love to have with the keto granola. But what's great about these is, if I can find the nutrition, it's 12 grams of protein, but three grams of carbs. Yogurt has been such a tricky one because it's usually either high in sugar if you want flavor. Plain yogurt's kind of hard to eat because it's, you know, very tart. And then granola has been really hard to find. Um, so I found this at Costco. It's the Keto Grain-Free Granola, 4 grams net carbs, 2 grams sugar, and it's got a lot of good things. It's pecans, pumpkin seeds, almonds, sunflower seeds, coconut, and hemp seeds. So I can have up to a third cup, and it's only 8 grams of carbs. So this combined, and I don't usually put the whole third cup, can be a bedtime snack too, and then it won't imbalance my blood sugars. Yum. It's now evening and I have just finished a cup of tea. A friend of mine sent this turmeric bliss by Tezo tea for me to try. Oh my God, this is delicious. I need to get a box of this. This is so good. I have been like sipping it to savor the flavor. So I think when I go do uh, some errands tomorrow, I might pick up a box if I can find it. I'm gonna make myself another cup of tea after this, and I'm gonna get on with some reading because I have a little moment to myself. So I'm gonna continue this, and then I'm gonna continue annotating Mansfield Park. I'm not very far into it just because I dedicated a lot of time to just the library books first. And then I'm gonna get a face mask going. I have been really bad at self-care well, since pretty much having my daughter, I just haven't had a whole lot of time to focus on doing little things like this. And I miss doing it. I miss like face masks, facials, doing my nails, just little things to kind of feel like, uh, you know, like a put together normal human being. So I'm just gonna do that while I read and enjoy a cup of tea. And I'm gonna end it here. So thank you so much for being here with me in this little vlog. You get a glimpse of, you know, little bits and pieces of my life. And I hope you're doing well. I'll see you in my next video.